Hi. We know that we have two type of risks associated with a particular investment. One is the market risk and another one is the diversifiable risk or sometimes we also call the market risk as non-diversifiable risk because uh, these market risk is associated with the whole market that cannot be diversified. You cannot eliminate that. Okay, so we can also say that two types. One is the non-diversifiable risk and diversifiable risk. Some people also say systematic risk and unsystematic risk. Uh, often it is also said systematic risk and idiosyncratic risk. Okay, so different people actually call these two types of risks in different name. Okay, so let us focus on what is called market risk or non-diversifiable risk or systematic risk. So the market risk or non-diversifiable risk or systematic risk is the risk as a result of the whole system or the whole market or the whole economy. Some people can also say this is the average risk that everyone has to face. So this is the market risk. So if you invest in any security or if you invest in any business, you will have to face this systematic risk or market risk. But on top of that, you have another component of risk that is not essentially related to the market or the system or the whole economy or that is that may not be the average one. It may be very specific to your security or your business. This one can be diversified. This one can be diversified. How can you diversify by that? Probably by investing half of your money in another business or in another security having different characteristic. So that the loss of the first one will be covered up by the gain of the second one. So this one can be diversified away. So this is why uh, the big investors um, or the mutual funds uh, or the big companies, they usually invest in multiple assets, multiple businesses, multiple securities to reduce the diversifiable risk. So the market risk is the portion of a securities standalone risk, that means the total risk of the security that cannot be eliminated. The total risk of the security when you invest only in that security, okay, that is the standalone risk. So the portion of the risk that cannot be eliminated through diversification, okay, this one is called the market risk or non-diversifiable risk or systematic risk. And diversifiable risk or unsystematic risk or in idiosyncratic risk that is the portion of a securities standalone risk that can be eliminated through proper diversification because the diversifiable risk is possible to diversify and there are many big investors who usually hold portfolios in order to diversify the risk investors should not expect you know, investors should not expect risk premium for the diversifiable risk. Therefore, our discussion of risk premium should be, uh, you know, should be important uh, for the market risk or systematic risk or non-diversifiable risk. And this is why we are going to focus our discussion on this portion of the risk, the market risk or non-diversifiable risk or systematic risk. How can we measure the market risk? We can measure it by beta. Okay, so what is beta? Beta is the measurement of the market risk or non-diversifiable risk or systematic risk associated with a particular investment or asset or business or security. Now, let us talk about beta again. Beta measures a stock's market risk and it shows a stock's volatility relative to the market. Actually, the beta can be defined as the stock's volatility 
relative to the market you know and it indicates how risky the stock is in in place of stock we can also think about business we can also think about a particular asset we can also think about any type of other investment okay so the beta indicates the riskiness of the asset or stock or security or business if that one is held in a well diversified portfolio where you have already eliminated the diversifiable portion of the risk the unsystematic risk the idiosyncratic risk that already has been diversified so only left risk is the systematic risk so beta is the measure of that so if you can somehow estimate the beta of an asset you can say that this is the relevant risk this is the relevant risk associated with the asset if you hold it as part of a very well diversified portfolio now the question is how can you uh, interpret beta we will talk about the estimation of beta later on but before that let us talk about the definition of beta we have to start with the measurement uh, with, with the value of beta 1 you now if the value of beta is 1 it means that the security of uh, security for which the beta is one uh, that security is just as risky as the average stock or average market or the whole market it does not have any more risk than the market it is as risky as the average stock or as risky as the market or as risky as the overall economy or all businesses average business business if the beta is greater than one then the security is riskier than average that means it has greater variability compared to the market variability the variability of the average variability of the market okay now if the beta is less than one the security is again less risky than average okay so we can see that the value of beta indicates whether the particular security is um, more risky compared to the overall market or less risky or equally risky to the market now let us talk about calculation of beta because if we cannot calculate it how can we uh, understand the uh, whether the security is more risky than the market or not or what is the level of systematic risk of the security so one approach is to estimate the is to run the regression of the securities past return against the past return of the market that means securities past return and the markets past return okay so these are the two variables so if we uh, run the regression so uh, you know the uh, you know that a familiar very familiar equation is y is equals to bx plus c this is the equation of straight line and if you if you if you uh, get the values of y you know certain values of y different values of y and if you get different values of x okay then you can use a software or only if you have a, only a few uh, observations then probably you can also do it by hand but nowadays everybody everybody does it using software you can also do it in excel microsoft excel or any statistical software so what you can do you can get different past returns of y let's say 20 months uh, 20 months return or, uh, or 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 40 months return or 60 months return of y you know uh, and and the same same number of returns of x of the same period of course it has to match okay so y will be the y will be the uh, while it will be the individual security for which you are going to calculate the beta okay and x will be the return of the market so if you take the return of the individual security okay or the asset for which you are going to calculate the beta and the returns of the market that has been observed in the past both for both the returns have been observed in the past and then you run the regression then you can easily get the value of b and the value of c c is the intercept and b is the slope of the straight line equation 
okay so this b is actually the beta it is indicating in the recent past how sensitive was the individual security return compared to the market return okay b is indicating that relationship and that is the definition of beta okay this is why we are saying that the slope of the regression line is defined as the beta coefficient for the security so let us look at it graphically okay you can see the x axis is showing the return of the market and y axis is showing the return of the individual security for which we are going to calculate the beta so this is a very simple example in this example we have taken the returns of the market and the security of last three years for giving a very simple uh, estimation but practically uh, only uh, practically what we do we usually take more than three observations not only not merely three observations and usually we take monthly return anyway so we are taking the returns of the market for last three years in this example and we are taking the returns of the individual security for which we are going to calculate beta for the same three years and we are running the regression and after running the regression we have got that the intercept is minus 2.59 and the slope is 1.44 so the slope of this line okay is 1.44 the value of b in the equation of the straight line that i have shown before okay so this is the beta of the security i okay this security the beta of the security is 1.44 that means it is indicating that the variability of return of security i is 1.44 times the variability of the market so in other words we can say if the market return increases by one percent the in this securities return is expected to increase by 1.44 percent and same in case of decrease so this is how you can calculate the beta and also you can interpret the beta